2018 season is coming to an end. The F1 2018 season is coming to an end. I can feel it in my bones. I can feel it in the air. We all know it's coming. And what a season it was. 2018 F1 Brazilian Grand Prix qualifying review. Before I start getting to this review, let's go to the Sky commentators. Specifically, Paul Dereste. The failed Formula One driver. The guy who couldn't even get into the Williams team. He had to be a third driver for the Williams team. No disrespect to Williams, but for the time being, at the moment, Williams are not doing that good. But Paul Dereste, the Scottish man, which I've got nothing against Scottish, Scottish people. I love Scottish people. But Paul Dereste, the Scottish man, a former driver of the Williams, the guy is so biased against Lewis Hamilton, and everybody knows it. This is a guy who was supposed to go to Mercedes, but no, they didn't pick him. They picked Lewis Hamilton instead. And he holds that grudge inside his body. It's churning inside when he sees Lewis Hamilton getting pole after pole after pole after pole. Lewis Hamilton, since the hybrid era started, we are at, it's going to be the 100th race in Abu Dhabi next week. If Lewis Hamilton wins the Brazilian Grand Prix and then next week goes on to win Abu Dhabi, that will be 50 race wins in the hybrid era with Mercedes. That is half of the hybrid era. And that is impressive. 50 races. There's been 100 races come Abu Dhabi at the F1 Grand Prix. And if Lewis Hamilton wins the Brazilian Grand Prix and then goes on next week to win Abu Dhabi, that would be 50 races in the hybrid era for Mercedes. That is half of the hybrid era. Now that is impressive. That is impressive. But you won't hear Paul Dereste say that. No, 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 not Paul Dereste. What does he say? Oh, at the beginning of practice, the same old bullshit every week. Practice, practice one, two, and three. Oh, Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen's going to win this Grand Prix. Max Verstappen's going to be on the front of the grid come Sunday. Max Verstappen's going to do this. Max Verstappen's going to make me a curry. Max Verstappen is going to take me to town tonight and drink a bottle of wine. And then we're going to go back to his hotel and play FIFA. That's what Paul Dereste says. And that's what Paul, Paul Dereste wants. But what happened? No, no, no. Who got P1? Lewis Hamilton. Yes. Yes. That's what happened. Lewis Hamilton got P1. And I love it. I love it. All the Lewis Hamilton haters. All the haters are coming out. Oh, Lewis Hamilton. Or oh, since he won the every every time he's won a championship, Lewis Hamilton, he's never won a race after. Just like last year and the year before. Every time when he won his first Grand Prix in 2008, when he wins the Grand Prix and there's a few races to go, he has never won a race after he's won the championship. But Lewis Hamilton thinking, right, I'm gonna I know what they're saying. Lewis Hamilton's watching this, probably in his hotel, probably in the back, watching on the monitor, right? That's, I'm going to tick that off my bucket list. I'm going to show him tomorrow. I'm going to come out tomorrow. I'm going to win the Brazilian Grand Prix. And then I walk straight up, straight up to Paul Dereste there with a big smile in my face while he interviews him. Remember, he's interviewing Lewis Hamilton. It's not the other way around because Paul Dereste there is a failed Formula One driver, in my opinion. And if you agree with me, good. If you don't, you don't. That's just the way it is. Oh, God, Paul Dereste, he can't help it, can he? Every single Grand Prix. Sometimes, most, look, most of the time, sometimes when he just, when he's going over the same old thing every fortnight, every week, whatever, how the Grand Prix lands, I just mute my TV sometimes because this guy is just full of it. He just can't stop himself. And he was on the sky pad today. I was thinking, get him off. Where's, where's flipping um, Anthony? Little Anthony, I think I know he's an endurance driver. I've missed Anthony on the Skypad. 
his analysis of the race is so um, detailed. Poor De Resta, he's just an idiot, in my opinion. But Q, listen, at the beginning of qualifying, yeah, at the beginning of qualifying, in practice, Hamilton's car wasn't doing that well. In Q1, his car was smoking. I didn't even know that Hamilton was going to get into Q2. I remember last year, Q1, he crashed his car at Brazil and he didn't even make into Q2. He had to start at the back of the, um, at the, back of the, um, the grid. And, and in Q1, I saw his car smoking Lewis Hamilton. I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be another disastrous Grand Prix for Lewis Hamilton. But Mercedes, as they are, the old British engineers, they got it sorted. Came out in Q2, was doing all right. But at the end of the day, I, I, I thought that Lewis Hamilton was... was didn't, I didn't even think in my head that he was going to get... I thought if he gets fourth, he's fourth on the grid, he's done well. Um, because at the beginning of the qualifying, he wasn't doing that well. His traction didn't look that good. His back end of his wing didn't look that good. It looked like there was too much um, weight on the right-hand side of the car. He didn't look balanced. And a bit, not like Bottas. His Bottas' his car looked more balanced than Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton's car didn't look balanced. Um, and I thought, no, 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 something. He's not gonna get on. He's not gonna get on um, qualifying. He won't get in Q one, Q two, or Q three. I mean, P one, P two, or P three. I thought maybe if he gets to P four, he'd be fine. But remember, Mercedes have still got something to fight for. This is. Um, I know Lewis Hamilton is the world champion, two thousand eighteen world champion. But at the end of the day, the one what means most to them. Is the team, is the constructors, and they want to win the constructors. They need to win the constructors. And in my opinion, they'll win it. If uh, Hamilton comes out tomorrow, gets second or third, Bottas is in the top three, they've won the constructors. Because I think they're about 35 points ahead um, at the moment. So um, they, they, they should win the constructors. And when they win the constructors, then they can party. Because that's the most important one. That's one where the money is, where they get the money. And this is where it's a whole team effort. It's a collective, as a collective, um, it's a collective effort, a whole team together when the constructors. So hopefully he can win it tomorrow in Brazil. Now, I'm going to go through the practice session, um, qualifying session, Q1, Q2, Q3. I, I haven't got many notes. I didn't even do no notes for Q3. I've done a few notes for Q1 and Q2. Um, so how it started, yeah, um, at the beginning of Q1, they were saying on the radio and on the um, Lewis Hamilton's radio and I think on Sorokin's radio, they were saying um, there's a risk of rain um, in Q1, maybe Q2. I was thinking, here we go. It's going to be one of them again. It's going to be... I was, I was hoping myself that in Q3, it started raining. Um, like when Hamilton um, and Bottas Mercedes done Ferrari a few months ago, when they come out in Q3... Um, they done. They, they put them on super soft tires. Bottas and Hamilton came out, done the fast lap, came into the pits, and then it started raining. And then Vettel came out with Raikkonen and came out in Q, in um, Q3. Um, but it was too late. By then it started raining. That was on the super soft tires. Started slipping everywhere. And then they had to go onto the inters. And then when they went onto the inters, Ferrari, they they, they couldn't get a fast time. And Vettel ended up finishing seventh on, um, in on the grid which um, I thought was going to happen again, but it never. Um, basically, they said there was risk of rain. Um, that's when Hamilton's car started to smoke. I thought to myself, here we go, bad luck again, just like last year. I'm not going to go over again. I told you uh, about it. Bottas um, was doing a, a fast lap. He ran into a bit of tra um, traffic. Um, I think it was Magnussen. I think, I'm not sure about that. I think it was Kevin Magnussen. He ran into Kevin Magnussen, kind of swerved him, didn't hit him, nearly hit him. Kind of swerved Kevin Magnussen and then nothing happened. There was nothing from the stewards, nothing from the FIA, no. There was nothing from the commentators about he was gonna, um, the stewards got to see him. They just carried on with the qualifying, so I thought, well, fair enough. At the, end of, at the end of qualifying one, that's when it started to rain. So I thought, here we go, it's going to start raining. It's going to start chucking it down. It's going to build up in Q2 and um, P2, no, Q2, and then in Q3, it's going to launch it down like it did. I think it was in Italy. I'm not sure about that. But at the end of the session, he had Sorokin went out, Hartley, um, Alonso, Stroll, Van Dor. Now, it has been 25 times in a row, 25 times in a row, that Alonso has out-qualified his teammate, Van Dor. 
Now, nah, come on, this has got to be a record. That has to be a record in F1. That you've had two teammates and your teammate is out qualified, yeah? not just 20, 25 times in a row. And they're both in equal cars, and that shows you how talented Alonso is. Alonso was in a, probably the worst car on the grid, probably the Williams is. Yeah. Williams is probably the worst car on the grid, but Alonso was in the McLaren. Um, not doing, ain't got no, no good downforce. Um, the car's not really fast, the corner and shit, and it traction's all over the place. It's, it's a disaster, basically. And um, and Vandal's in an equal car to Alonso, and Alonso's out qualified in 25 times in a row. Imagine if Alonso was in a... Listen, if Alonso was in a um, Renault, I think, nah, if um, Alonso was in a Haas or a uh, Force India, I think Alonso could definitely get um, on the podium. That's just my opinion. Because I think Alonso was special to me. Alonso was one of the greatest drivers of all time. He's up there with Ayrton Senna. He's up there with Lewis Hamilton. He's up there with Michael Schumacher. He's up there with Fajo. He's not. Listen, don't watch. Don't watch because he's got two championships. He's not one of the greatest of all time. It's what he does with the car. Oh, and he's had a few bad decisions. He went to Ferrari. He, he fell out with Ferrari. Ferrari wasn't competitive, so he left Ferrari. Went somewhere else, and it didn't work out for him. So that's just the way the cookie crumbles at the end of the day. But look at Alonso, a raw talent. When he first came in the um, F1, he was the guy. He was the antidote for Michael Schumacher. And Michael Schumacher was winning all these championships. They needed someone to come along to take him down. They brought in Alonso, and Al Alonso whooped his ass. Whooped his ass. He came and won two championships with Renault, Alonso, and then a few, uh, just after that, Schumacher retired. It was down to Alonso. He kind of forced Schumacher and Kimi as well to a, to an extent, but more Alonso to force uh, Michael Schumacher to retire because Schumacher knew these were the new guys coming to the scene. They, I'm not going to beat these guys, so he retired. Alonso came and basically to me, kind of he was like contributed to retire Michael Schumacher. And to me, he's one of the greatest of all time, Alonso. Um, his, his, his race craft is unreal. So he goes out. So let's get back to the review. He goes out of the um, the first qualifying. He's been doing that. Um, he's been like for the last three or four races. So it's a shame for Alonso. Um, hopefully tomorrow when he starts his race tomorrow, he gets um, a decent start and his car doesn't break down again like it did in Mexico and in the USA and in Russia. It's just, you know what I mean? It's just like, he's, he's a legend, he's leaving the F1, hopefully not for good. Hopefully, I know he's going to the Indy 500, and before I, I talking about the Indy 500, just before I started um, doing this video, something popped up on my phone from the F1 website, and breaking news, if, not, if you haven't heard it yet, breaking news, um, um, McLaren has just announced that, um, we all knew that Alonso was going to the Indy 500 next year, but McLaren have just announced that, um, um, Alonso is going to be going to the Indy 500 next year, but he's going to be racing for McLaren. So um, that's just announced. We didn't know who he was going to be racing for, but he's going to be racing for McLaren. And Mar McLaren is getting the hands dirty in the Indy 500. And hopefully, if he has a good season next year in the Indy 500 and hopefully wins it, maybe that will lure him back to the F1 because it's a shame. Alonso, I know Alonso is getting on, in, getting on up there in age. I think he's 37, I think he's 36, 37 now. And but to me, he's still got the race craft, he just needs a good car, that's all he needs. And he's, I'd love him to come back and just maybe just do one one season with Ferrari, do even one with um Force India, maybe Red Bull, you know, you never know, maybe not going to be Red Bull, not after what happened with him and Christian Horner, but maybe another competitive team. Maybe could you, I'd love to see Alonso again just on the podium, I'd just love to see it because it's a shame that a guy like that is leaving like that leaving the um, the um, F1 like that, but hopefully he could come back. Now, on to Q2. Now, this one I thought was weird in Q2. Sorokin, right? Sorokin, was, he wasn't doing... He was At first, I thought he was doing a fast lap, Sorokin. Um, Hamilton just done one of his... He was doing his out lap, um, Hamilton. He was going slow, just going up to the first, um, the last turn on the straight on the Brazilian Grand Prix, just the long straight. And as Sorokin was coming around, Sorokin was behind Hamilton. And, and um, funny, something funny happened. Hamilton moved over to the side and, and he nearly hit Sorokin. It could have been a bad crash. It could have been two guys out of the Grand Prix. It could have been a nasty crash the way it was because Sorokin was going fast. But that's why I thought it was his fast lap. But he said he was going, it was, it was his out lap, his engineers. So I thought 
if Hamilton would have hit him, right, that would have been both at the Grand Prix, but he never. He swerved him, but Hamilton swerved onto the left. I thought Hamilton should have just stayed where he was and struck him would have just went round him, but he never. They nearly crashed, and I thought, here we go, Hamilton's going to get pinched. They're going to take him into the stewards. They're going to give him points. And But as far as I know, at the moment, nothing at the moment, but maybe just because it was his out lap, if it was his fast lap that he was doing and Hamilton swerved over, he would have got um he would have got pinched. Just like Luke, just like with Alonso two I think it was two thousand and seven Monaco and Alonso was on his fast lap and Michael Schumacher um deliberately parked his car there. So Alonso had to go around him and lost a bit of time. Alonso on the qualifying lap. So and then the F um then the stewards pinched, penalised um Schumacher and then Schumacher had to stay at the back of the um go to the back of the grid. I thought that was gonna happen to Hamilton. But um, they said no, it was his um, outlap, and Hamilton said he didn't see him. So uh, at the moment, there's nothing to come through. They're saying on the, there's no um, news coming through that Hamilton is going to get pinched for it. So, you know, it's one of them. Then something funny happened. I think it was during Q2 as well. Vettel was on the soft tyres because it started to rain, and then at the end of Q2, Vettel was on the soft tyres. Ham and Vettel came into the um ha no Vettel came into the um the pits and then when you come into the pits you pass away your car. I think it was in Q3, I think it was in Q3, Q2 or Q3. He came into the pits and he's supposed to weigh his car. But when you go to get your car and you come into the pits, you pause you put your car onto the scales, you're supposed to turn your engine off, and then when you turn your engine off, then the way and then the way and then you start your car back up and drive up. But what Vettel did, Vettel came into the pits, he went onto the scales, broke the scales. Didn't turn his engine off. They told him to turn his engine off. He knows the rules. He didn't turn the engine off. And then he, um, they couldn't weigh him. And they couldn't weigh the car. And he broke the scales. And then um, he basically went to his team, took a, um, changed his tyres, went back out again for his fast lap. So what the, um, the, the rumours are now that maybe he's going to get penalised for it. Because, like I said, when you go into the pits and you go into the scales, you're supposed to turn your car off. Get weighed your car and then that's it. But he never he turned up, he kept his engine running, broke the scales because of it when he drove off and and I think he's gonna get penalised. Nothing's come up at the moment. If something comes up at the moment while I'm doing this video, I'll let you know guys straight away. But at the moment there's nothing coming up. But he might get penalised, maybe a fine, I don't know. But maybe he might have to start at the back of the um, grid. Because Martin Brundle says it happened to him a few and um, years and years ago. The commentator and Sky Martin Brundle. He was an F1 driver. Everybody knows. If you're watching this, you know who Martin Brundle is. Um, he says that um, it happened to him and um, they sent him home. They're not going to send Vettel home. Not in this day and age. They might put him at the back of the grid. And that's what that's what it might be. I don't know. But like I said, during this video, if anything happens, I'll either tweet it after or I'll put it on Instagram and whatever. You can see my channels on the side. Follow me on there. And look out for the news if Vettel is going to get penalised. I don't think he should get penalised myself. I think it was just one of them things. What um, look, it's one of the things what's going to happen. You could might you might just he might have just forgot. He might have been in the moment. He remember he was doing his qualifying lap. You don't know what could have happened. He could have just came on, didn't think. He just got on there and drove off. You don't know. Anything can happen when you're in the moment. You're doing your qualifying lap. Sometimes you don't think in there. You don't know. I'm not a driver myself, but in sports, it's like in football, doing tennis, and there's certain rules you might not obey them because you might think, you know what? I'm just going to do my thing. And you, the drilling in kicks in. You don't know what's going to happen. So hopefully he doesn't get penalised. I don't want him to get penalised. I do like Vettel. I do like Vettel. People don't think I do. I do like Vettel. I respect him as a four-time world champion. How can you not like Vettel, but I just like Hamilton better. There you go. So, another thing that was what stood out for me as well in qualifying two. At the end of qualifying two, Charles Leclerc, he had a very bad lap. He was um, it's a couple of minutes to go. He was on, he was supposed to be his last lap. He swerved out to the side, the apex. Lost so much time. He was in danger of going out of Q3. He was in danger and um, no, he was in danger of going out of Q2. So basically, he was about to pit in, and his engineer said, come and pit in, and Charles Leclerc goes, you know what? I've still got time left, forget it. I'm going to go back and do another lap. And he went out, done another lap, and he got into Q3. If he would have went into them pits, like Magnussen, he would have went into them pits, and he wouldn't have made it into Q3. But what he did, he used his driving, driving instinct. 
He said, no, I'm not going to piss. I'm going to go and do another lap. We've got, we got about a minute left. I can still do it. And he went out and done it. And he went into um, um, Q3. Good. I've respected him for that. And you know what? He's the guy for the future. Everybody's talking about Max Verstappen. And was going, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Max Verstappen. Just like the Sky commentators are saying, Max Verstappen, you watch him next You watch him next season. Red Bull. Yes, Red Bull's going to have a Honda engine. Yeah, Honda engine. I know. Honda engine, Honda engine's going to be in the Red Bull next year. You watch Red Bull. Okay, then we'll see what happens. McLaren said that about the Honda engine. What happened to McLaren a couple of years ago? You remember that? Exactly. But for me, next year, the star that you got to watch out for is Charles Leclerc. He's going to Ferrari. He's going to Ferrari. So you know that the, he's got... There's. The, I don't need to say anymore. He's going to Ferrari. And for me, Vettel better watch out. If he's a main driver now, he's their first driver now. But if Charles Leclerc starts out qualifying Vettel next season, which I think he's going to do, in my opinion, I think he's going to do it. And there you go, Vettel's got to start looking, being um, watching for his spot. He may not be the main driver anymore. Charles Leclerc is a young guy, the hungry tiger coming up, and he's going to want to try and take his spot. Charles Leclerc, I like him. There's something about him. He's special, man. It's something about him. Just like I think George Russell's special as well. But again, we can save that for another day. So at the end of Q2, we had the guys that went out, Magnussen, Perez, Ocon, Huckenberg, and Sorokin. Q3, nothing really happened. Um, same old faces. You had Mercedes, Ferrari, Red Bull fighting for the spot. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to get into Q3 because nothing really happened in Q3. I'm going to let you know how it finished. I've got my notes on here. Um, let's have a look. Standings at the end of Q for at the end of the race we had um Lewis Hamilton on pole, Sebastian Vettel P2, and third Kimi. No, no, that's the there. Here we go. Hold on, I was looking at another one. So, yeah, we had we had Vettel on pole, second now Lewis Hamilton on pole, Vettel in second, third um, Valtteri Bottas, fourth Kimi Raikkonen, fifth Max Verstappen, sixth Danny Ricciardo. Seventh, uh, oh yeah, Dan Ricardo got penalised um, from last year, last week, because um, he had a blowout with his turbo. They replaced his turbo, so he was going to have a five grid penalty. So, we're, so basically, Dan Ricardo finished at six, so he's going to go back to five places seven, eight, nine, ten. So he's going to be 12 tomorrow. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now he's going to be 11th. He's going to start off tomorrow. So he's going to go back five places. So, yeah. So, Dan Ricardo in 6th, 7th, Marcus Ericsson, 8th, Charles Leclerc, 9th, Roman Grosjean, 10th, Pierre Gasly, Pierre Gasly, sorry, 11th, Kevin Magnussen, 12th, Sergio Perez, 13th, Esteban Ocon, 14th, Nico Huckenberg, 15th, Sergio Sorokin, um, Sergio Sorokin, 16th, Carlos Sainz, 17th, Brendan Hartley, 18th, Fernando Alonso, and 19th, Lance Stroll, and... At the back, Stoffel Van Door. But like I said, Vettel, he might have to start tomorrow at the back of the grid, but nothing's coming through yet. I'll, only con I'll be constantly updating my browser so if anything, any news um, comes out about Vettel if they've made a decision yet. The stewards, but me, I wouldn't penalise him. I'll just leave it the way it is. So, at the moment, yeah, I'll do that tomorrow with construction. So, like I said, every week I go through um, different video. Like, I can't really show you the video because of um, copyright, but I can show you some audio and you can listen to some interviews as well. Usually, I don't really do interviews. Usually, I do the qualifying. I play the audio. It should be six minutes long, but now I'm just going to show you a few audio clips. This is on board Lewis Hamilton Brazilian pole lap. So, let me play this for you guys so you can listen. Perfect again, nice turning all the way around. Just throws the car around. Perfect gear, down to gear four. Nice swift move there by Lewis Hamilton. Perfect. 
sector one. We've got a yellow in sector one. We've got a bit of time in sector one. Up again in sector two, so we time up in sector two. And he did get the fastest lap as well on fastest um, fastest lap at the Brazilian Grand Prix. Done it twice. There you go. Get in there, mate. Get in there. So that was his. That was Lewis Hamilton's winning pole lap. Let's see what else of audio we've got. Um, this is Charles Leclerc now. This was in Q2, and this is was his. Um, He's basically his lap, um, which he wasn't supposed to do. Like I said before, his engineer said come in. He had a disastrous lap in qualifying in Q2, and he's ready to turn into the pits. His engineer said come into the pits, but Charles Leclerc says, you know what, forget it. I'm going to go back out. We've got a minute left. I'm going to see what I can do. And this is um, his lap in Q2 to get him into Q3. There we go. Come on, long thing, man. Long thing, give it another go. If you heard that, that's probably the fireworks. That's all. There we go. Running, running too much, running too much. Ready to come into the pit now. Then call in, call in, and box this lap. Box, box. No, 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 no. I want to stay out. We go for one more, and I try. There you go. Never let it go. Never let it go. Claire goes eight fastest. Ah, oh, what a lot. I'm happy this time. There you go, went back out, the rain was kicking in. He slipped in his last um, lap. He was ready to box it. His engineer, Lockie, heard it, box, box, box. And he never boxed, he said, no, 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 I'll give it another go. I like that. This is Vettel, qualifying Vettel's unhappy Ray Bridge call. His weight, the weighing bridge that like I told you about, about that he went onto the, um, the scales and he's supposed to turn his engine off and he never... So this is 43 seconds long. Goes into the away line. Wanted to stop at FIA bridge. Come back, back, back. Hop. Yeah, they're asking to move. Yeah. Hop, speed up. Come on, speed up. What have you got to say about that? And that's what basically happened. So a bit a little um, unfortunate for him. Um, I don't think he deserves to get... If he's going to get a penalty, I don't think he should get one. Not in my opinion. But you know the stewards today, they give you a penalty for anything. Um, what else have we got now? Yeah, that's it really. That's the audio we've got at the moment. Let's see if we've got a few interviews. Yeah, we've got interviews. Um, this is the interview. I'll do, I'm not going to do all of them. I'll do um, Alonso first. Alonso interview. He says, basically, in the interview, was asking, what do you think about the race tomorrow? And he goes, we're going to need a crazy race tomorrow to get anywhere. I'll play it. So it was 48 seconds long. It's Alonso. Fernando, looks like the rain came just a touch too late for you guys. Uh, it was always going to be a tough weekend. Is this about where you were expecting to be? Yeah, unfortunately, yes. I think in, in dry conditions, we saw earlier on the weekend that we didn't have the pace uh, this weekend. And uh, yeah, without any rain or any unexpected things tomorrow, I think it's going to be tough uh, to get uh, some points. But uh, we'll try anyway. I think uh, the lab's still enjoyable with light fuel and new tyres. You know, these cars, they feel good. Obviously, not quick enough to, to go through the qualifying sessions. But uh, yeah, you, you concentrate on, on tomorrow's race. car does tend to come alive in the race, though, doesn't it? Do you think you can get points tomorrow? I think on pure pace and a normal dry race, uh, it's going to be hard because uh, maybe we are not quick enough. Uh, but yeah, if there is any, any rain opportunity or any uh, crazy race, let's say, we will take the opportunity. So that was a land Let me see if there's any more interviews. Let's have a look. I've got one with Max Staffan. 
P5 uh, for you today, about the best that you could hope for given what we know about Saturdays. Yeah, exactly. So I think we could fill that in already before the weekend that we would be fifth and sixth. Um, yeah, I think uh, car balance was not ideal. Um, could have gotten a bit more out of it also because there are not that many corners on this track. So you want to extract the most out of the corners, which I think we didn't do today. So I think we could have been a bit closer if we had a bit more front grip. But um, yeah, it's not going to change the world. Um, tomorrow is going to be a bit warmer, so hopefully a bit better for us, also for the rear tires. So yeah, we'll find out. When it levels out tomorrow, can you fight for a podium? Can you fight for a win? I think a win will be very tricky, but hopefully we can do something at the start or a strategy. Um, what else? We've got... Um... I still wrote it on them. This is the one I, what made me laugh. We got interviewed, and he says, um, he says to this is Alonso, another interview. They asked him, um, how you think the race is going to go tomorrow? I like this interview. Here's another one. Fernando, just the one session for you today, but how was FP2? Yeah, it was fine. Um, yeah, missing uh, FP1, a couple of laps, and um, testing one, one of the, the compounds, but uh, we had all the information we, we wanted from FP1, and uh, in FP2 we had a, a clean session as well, and uh, I think uh, with some good information, we need to analyze everything, and, uh, and hopefully be more competitive tomorrow. Yeah, how is the rest of the weekend looking based on what you've seen today? Because you looked pretty strong in the final standings there in FP2. Yeah, it was, I think, like always here in Brazil, a couple of uh, tens, they give you a lot of positions, so we need to, to make uh, perfection on, on the lap tomorrow. We need to, to find the, uh, the right tuning on the setup because yeah, one or two tens can make uh, five or six positions. So it's what we're aiming, uh, a lot of work to do, and um, yeah, but, uh, quite confidence and, and positive Friday. So I'm going to try and go back to that Vettel one because he was getting an interview... I kind of cut it off. Where is it? If I can find it. Um, here we go. It was the Way Bridge one. I cut off to listen to it again. They want me to stop at FIA Bridge. Hop, oh, Marvek. Marvek. Hop. Yeah, I'm asking to hold. Yeah. Hop, speed up. Come on, speed up. Why is the guy just standing there for? Just find him, find him for the flipping that like he broke the bridge, you guess. Uh, what have you got to say about that? Here we go. I think it's better if I uh, don't say anything. There you go, big and, grin on um, his face. looking ahead, they shouldn't, I mean, they shouldn't call us because uh, when the conditions are changing like that, I think it's unfair if somebody gets pulled in. And uh, yeah, I wanted them to hurry up, so. So that's it, really. That's my audio for the day i'll be back tomorrow um for the brazilian grand prix race day review um follow me on instagram solo double underscore p1 follow me on twitter solo p1 follow me on youtube solo p1 and follow me on twitch and solo underscore p1 oh we got i've got some unboxings coming soon battlefield one um do look edition i pre-ordered that from game for ps4 and xbox one i'll be doing an unboxing of that and uploading it to my channel as well and obviously in december there's a big december coming i'll have the dd1 dd2 and hopefully the ps4 podium series i'll be doing unboxes of them as well fanatec if you're a sim racer check that out on my channel as well that'll be coming soon in december so this is solo p1 signing out of the 2018 f1 brazilian grand prix qualifying solo p1 signing out bye